and we all know what he did, both at CBS, where he had some very good contributions from people like, or companies like ours and and uh, Norman and Lorimar and 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 was driven, you know, really cared. I mean, Rhoda's wedding was an hour because Fred said it should be an event, and uh, and we later may have regretted that, but he was a power. He went to ABC and he arrived. And, and I don't want to minimize his role there, but they were on they were on the rise a little bit, and he just picked them up and took them to the top. And for the first time ever, which was roughly in the mid '70s, for three years in a row, I think they became the number one network. And so now he had done that at two networks, and he and he was then offered the job at NBC as president, and that became. This is very direct. And, but it's not as negative as it sounded. It was the Peter Principle. He was a programmer, not a president. And um, and there were just an awful lot of things, I think, that distracted him, and, and, it, and it put him on a kind of a losing track. And, and as things got a little bad, uh, you know, he became, as we all can, sort of desperate, and there was a flop sweat aspect of it all. I don't know if you remember, but when he when he took the job at NBC, he still had X number of months to go on his contract at ABC, and ABC wouldn't let him out, and so he went and sat at the Kahala Hilton in Hawaii, in, in Hawaii for months, and uh, and maybe he would lost his edge or something. But he just, what did I say in the book? He just he he just went in a, a batting slump. That's what it was. I mean, he just had three years of nothing. He touched, turned to anything but. Something awful, and uh, and he and he, when I got back there after Fred Silverman, he had discouraged so many people. The morale factor was terrible because as he got more desperate, he he uh, he, he would have all these guys in his office all the time. For a man who who did everything himself, wanted to do everything himself, he he had to be surrounded by this coterie or entourage of people all the time. It, it, it just as a I don't know, sort of a security blanket or whatever. Um, and, and it was a terrible period in his life, I think. And then he discovered during that period, where he was drinking quite a bit and smoking and... Very overweight. And overweight, and, uh, and, and, and he discovered he was diabetic. And I think that really turned him around. And it, now he got his health under control. He was let go at NBC. He came out here, had to live through a couple of years of, you know negative thinking about him. And then he discovered what I call geriatric theater in television. And he discovered that you could bring back, you know, Perry Mason and, and you could bring back uh, Dick Van Dyke as, and, and, uh, who, and was it Buddy Epson or somebody else. Uh, but, but he had about four of those shows, that w the demographics of which weren't too good, but they, but they were very popular. Uh, and, uh, and, and he reinvented himself.